Okay, Trav. I've actually never heard of him before, but he's been around for a while, so I might as well start listening to his stuff now. I would probably describe him as like a slower paced Tory Lanes. Um, there aren't as many like sort of hard Tory lines, but don't get me wrong, he does still have some great lines here and there. But like there was nothing that could sort of compare to the what's the difference between my 458 and your 488. You know, like no, I don't think anything comes close to being as hard as that. For the most part, the lyrics were okay, but there were a few sort of a few points throughout where the lyrics were quite weak and uh, it, it did let the song down. Like in uh, Rent Jew, he says, you really bad too. I ain't trying to gas you, I just trying to know. Like a cashew, never to the gang, I won't catch you. What's a, what's a cashew got to do with this? Why is, why is he talking about a cashew? And then in O2 Carter, he rhymed mannequin with Hurricane, as in like a, a hurricane. If you have to like, like bending a word to make a rhyme is okay, but bending it to the point where it's unrecognizable and you can't tell what the word's meant to be anymore, I think you may have gone a little bit too far with it. Yeah, maybe try and rethink the line a bit. His beat selections were actually pretty similar to Tori as well. It's trap, but it's kind of unique as well. Like it, everything is fairly original and, or you don't put a song on, hear the beat and go, oh, this is kind of like, you know, the beat from this song. Like, it's all quite original, uh, which is kind of impressive to do nowadays with the oversaturated trap market. You Choose, though, actually featured Tory Lanes, and the chorus had a pretty funny line in it. Uh, it's four in the morning, what are you trying to do? Only things open as legs and fast food. Thought that was kind of funny. And then uh, Tory was really great as well. He had a play on words for that lyric in his verse. I thought it was brilliant. He says, it's four up in the morning. Only thing open is if you driving in them, diving in them, trying to eat it up like fast food. I thought that was actually very clever. And I, I like that he sort of, you know, worked the chorus into his verse. It, I don't know if he worked closely with Trav on this or not. Shit like that makes it seem like he did. Yeah, I, I do really like that touch. Gd U, which features Young Thug, was actually one of the better tracks on the project. And while Young Thug was good, he had a, a weird line, which he's known for. I got three hoes with me, bowling pins. I don't really know what he could be saying there. Like, maybe I'm just, I'm missing something. Like, at first I thought he, he might have meant, like, three holes, like a bowling ball. But he said bowling pin. Unless he got the two confused, and it's like a, you know, she blow me like a clarinet, or whatever the, whatever Yachty said, situation. It could be one of those where he meant to say ball, but said pin. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what he means by that. Uh, Real Neighbor Party had a, a decent little Dirk feature. He got a little bit choppy in there uh, at some point with his flows. They were a bit hard to follow. But Trav had a really cold line. Bitch, I'm quick to go. Quick to grip the pole. Make it click and blow. But like the way that he says it in his American accent, it does sound a lot better. That was probably the peak lyricism throughout the entire album. So if that doesn't impress you, it might be a good idea to stay away from this album. TCL had a lovely intro where he's talking to his daughter. She says, Daddy, you a gangster? And he's like, no, I'm, I'm just regular. You know, you a tough girl. And she's like, no. You know, it was quite nice. But from that point on, he didn't talk about his daughter at all. He just said, like, I'll kill someone if I have to. You know, like, I don't care about that. If you want to talk about killing people, say, like, you know, I'll kill to protect her. Relate it back to the daughter who you very sweetly introduced in the start of the song. I think that he could have had something nice going there and he just ruined it by not delivering that little extra bit, you know? The chorus on that is actually pretty annoying as well. I'll play that real quick. So I kind of see what he's doing. It's like, I don't know what you call it, where you sort of continue on the line, like the last sort of syllable on the line, like da, ah, uh, you know, that's fair enough, but I don't know, the break in between, like, the last word and then that sort of melodic little bit, I think it sort of separated the word and the melody. So it was just like, you know, you say your line and then you made a noise. I don't know, that might just be a personal thing to me, but I thought that was quite um uh, annoying. And he, he did do it a little bit too slow, too, I think. Mexico is a song about falling in love with his drug dealer's daughter. Uh, it's got a great beat and a very clean chorus. But the chorus is just far too long. I will play that one as well. 
Oh, that sounds so good. Especially with the beat as well. That's really nice. But he says it four times. Like, I think saying it twice is enough. And then just, like, move on from there. I thought that was a bit too much. A Prada Shoes featured Nav. And for some reason, Trav gave him the chorus. Trav is perfectly capable of a chorus, as we just heard. Why he would make Nav do it, I don't know. I don't think it needs to be said, but it wasn't a great song. Nav had a very sus line. Pinky ring filled with piss. Because I'm on my shit. Apparently, he said something similar before that his jeweler was trying to piss on him. In saying this, he means that his, his, his diamonds are yellow. But, like, why would you associate something negative with something you're trying to be positive with, you know? Like, I'm not going to flex about having pretty eyes and just say, like, yeah, I got them eyes, got them feces in them. You know, that, that doesn't sound good. But being honest, though, when Trav came back in, he sounded much better. I don't know, maybe that's the key to a good album. Like, similar to that old trick of, like, girls only hanging out with other girls that are uglier than them to make themselves look hotter. You know the one. Maybe that's the key to making a good album. Or, or a good first album, I should say. So that, like, that artist sounds good and you're like, oh, yeah, this guy's good. And then the second album, you just, I don't know, flop. And this one's quite picky, but at the end of Bankroll, um, there was, like, 20 to 25 seconds of just beat and with an artist like Trav who is melodic trap that's what the listeners are there for the melody I don't know the way I see it is once you finish the last chorus fade out that beat as quick as you can fade in the next one of the next song and get that chorus started as soon as you can you know don't get people to the go oh no nah, fuck this guy this this has taken ages to get to the next song. And then in Ode to Me, French Montana had an okay verse. It started out pretty hard. There was a really nice crescendo in the middle where he sort of really brought up his vocals. Um, but then right at the end, he just lost all sense of flow and it just fell apart. Like, try banging your head to the beat throughout that entire verse. You just become confused at the end. You, like, the beat's unchanged, but he's just throwing you off with how he's like laying his words down on the track. You, you can't keep track of what's going on. And the very last track, Streets Don't Love You, I'll let you figure out what that song is about. Uh, it was a little bit more woke than the rest. And that's one thing I've noticed as well with trap artists like Trav. Tori even did this on his last album where like the majority of the album will just be like, I'm leaving stains, you know, slinging that coke. And then the last song is quite an introspective one with like a, a message behind it and a meaning. Like I don't know why. Tori did that with um message to God or something. Children's message to God, something like that. But yeah, it, it wasn't an entirely bad album this one. It was nothing new at all. There are several uh projects that I would rather listen to and it just it doesn't really have a reason to be there. I'm gonna rate it a five out of ten just on the basis that it's not bad but at the same time it's like the opposite of groundbreaking um, but personal taste obviously plays a massive role in what you think sounds good so it might be your cup of tea uh, but if you do like this check out Tory Lanes. you'll probably like him um, so be sure to check back on Friday for my review of Trinidad James's new album it's a feature album alongside producer Fire Black Filter I'll see you then that's a wrap